Hey everybody, Al Puglisi, Al Puglisi Trains, and John Sethian has agreed to show us a little bit about your technique for doing brick. Okay. So go ahead and show us, John, okay. what, what you're working on. All right, well, this building here, there, if, for those of you who ride on the northeast corner, mm -hmm. just north of Trenton, on the east side of the tracks, is this long warehouse building. Okay. Uh, it originally, it's in Hamilton Township, New Jersey. Uh -huh. It was originally a shirt mill. It was then uh, bought by the F.A. Strauss Company with only one S at the end uh -huh. for making worsted yarns and, uh, and threads. Okay. And then it was a novelty company. It is now being turned into a condominium. That's a whole other story. Wow. But I've always been fascinated by this building. It's huge. It's obviously parts have been built at some time and parts the other. Mm -hmm. It's got the nice clock tower on top of it. So I decided I'm going to build it. Probably one of the most ambitious O scale modeling yet, yes. even exceeding the Canberra. You know, I might, I, I, yeah. I might, I'm not to interrupt, I, I might put this video, as a matter of fact, I will put this model on this video in a, I have a video segment called it's, It Begs to Be Modeled. Oh, okay. And it's well, a segment yeah. that telling folks, folks, if you see something, take pictures of it and try and model it, try and build it. Now, did you take these photos of it? I took the, I went up there. And I took about 120 photos. I put them together in a composite. Um, if you look close, you'll see stuff that's replicating. Uh -huh. I can't build a whole building. This thing right. is five feet across, even in O scale. Right. But I did capture the es essence of the old part of the building with the clock tower mm -hmm. and this tower over here, the connector between the two, and the newer part of the building, which is kind of this... Uh, elementary school windows wow have you just have you considered uh making this a, a flat that that people could purchase uh, it's, no i mean I, i'm, I'm going to make a it's going to have depth i'm going to right. mine's going to be basically one of these sections deep is where, is where it's going um it's beautiful yeah. it's it's i mean as a flat you know obviously yeah, you would, know you would you would you know put it up but uh so the in order to, the windows are very unique. At first you look at them and say those are standard Tishi windows, but they're not. They're really tall. They're two feet across. They're eight feet high. Wow. Yeah, something like that. They're double hung windows, but they're huge. Right. And they have really narrow mullions. So one thing you led to another, I got a laser cutter. Okay. Why not learn how to use a laser cutter, which I did. Uh, first I had to learn how to use CAD program again. I used to be very proficient in it. Mm -hmm. So these are, if you look down here, these are the, some of the components of the window. Wow. And somebody in the back of the room probably has his hand up saying, why aren't you just 3D printing them? Mm -hmm. And the answer is, this is O scale, this is going to be up close, this is going to be, if you will, a hero building. Right. So I don't want it to look like a blob of plastic. Right. I want it to look like the individual components. Right. And if you look here, you get enough light on it. Oh yeah. That's a window. Um, that's beautifully glazed. Probably. Yeah. You know what? We should. Well, I shouldn't have put the black thing behind no, it. Okay. Right, but anyway, you can see there's an upper sash, a lower sash. I can assemble it any way I want, upper and lower. I can also just put a brick insert in there. Um, it has the wood, you can tell it has wood patina. Yeah, well that's you the know? whole, yeah, it has wood you know? patina. And you can see that no two windows will be built the same way. Right. You know, it's the same principle behind a symphony. You want to have many different people doing the same thing. Right. You can see that there are individual components. It's beautiful. You, you can also see that's a door. That is this door right here. Again, I think that's about seven or eight components that I made it out of. Um, uh, paint's a little bit uh, on the lighter side, mm -hmm. but that's okay. I had to make the lintel across the top. Wow. Etch that, you know, laser cut that. The the brickwork itself we'll get to a second. Are you going to put an interior in this scene? Being uh, I will so eventually big. have an interior of some type because I have to. It'll also, yeah. This is the main door. All right, let's take and a look. Let me just... Now look at that. Is that stained glass or some kind of No, that's this is, don't forget this is an old building that is being modified, but okay. here is my door. Not quite complete yet. Made out of I don't know what. 
wow. ten different layers of, of cut wood, uh -huh. and uh, it's just temporarily really? held together. These will be glass blocks. So I think glass blocks are cool. Mm -hmm. I will argue they did it sometime or another. For example, the mullions are three different layers right. to get that effect. You know, I'm really? etching the uh, lines in the brick all with a laser cutter. You can see the depth of, you know, the way it's stacked. Yeah, that's, yeah. that's important. You're never going to get that look in plastic. Wow. Uh -huh. And this looks great, yeah. especially, and when you paint it, it's going to have yeah. that, it's yeah. going to have that. It'll, uh, it'll all be the same, the same color green as, you know, the rest, the rest of them. Now, the, the green, you've been to the building, I guess, and, and looked at the recent color. This looks a little different shade yeah this yeah this this green well this photograph is doing it too but yes right I will I will get the closer to the right color green right. Um, the brickwork the basic brickworks are coming from uh, monster monster model works okay that's that's uh, wood, wood yeah wood wood, brick. wood that's been engraved I use this will be the older section will be old brick the newer section will be new brick mm -hmm. um, that's the basic brick sheets, but all the things like these vertical columns and all this brickwork on the top, mm -hmm. I'm going to have to laser cut all of that in laser okay. in layers. In but I'm getting pretty good at matching the. You can see, this part here is where I screwed up the first. This is a test piece right, right here, a test panel, um, and this is the thinner. This comes so in this two is, thicknesses. This is the thicker. This is the eighth inch one. Okay. Oh, the, the it comes on these. Uh, that almost look like plywood. No, it or, comes just. It's just not. These these are just glued on here. Right, it's just the plywood sheets. But I mean, it looks like a pl like a, a plywood sheet of some no, kind. It, it's no, it's basswood. He makes okay. it out of pure basswood. So it's a piece of thick basswood that that, he's, that's laser cut into brick. Correct. Okay. Exactly. Al. You got it. Okay. Um, and the reason I wanted eighth inch thick because I have to leave the depth for the windows and the doors. Right. You know. To sink them. To sink them in there to make them look like they're real masonry. Uh, Built you know, structures, wood structures, and uh, if you if you're not using um, monster brick, John and I were just talking earlier because uh, Howard Zane and I are getting ready to mm -hmm. to experiment with different um, techniques of staining. You know, just weathering the brick. Tell us how you uh, applied the color. These are craft paints, or <laughs> just that's what? like a okay. The basic idea is you put it on in layers, like everything in model railroading. And after you put on a layer, seal it with a flat clear. Okay. I use uh, the Krylon 1311 class clear, uh, sorry, flat clear. Flat clear. You could also use dull coat. Okay. I spray paint the whole thing with a cream colored chalky paint. I can't remember the color. I think they call it chalky cream or something. Yeah, it's, chalky, it's it. chalky color, but I can't remember the color. Yeah. Uh, colonial white. Yeah, so yeah, I saw it the other day. Yeah, it, that seals the wood and gives it a good base. Then I use a sponge to dab on about three or four colors of craft paint. Okay. Okay, brick color. Then I paint some individual bricks. That's not as arduous as it sounds, so you don't have to paint too many of them in a darker right. color. Take like a, uh, uh, like a burnt umber or something. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Um, spray it with the clear flat, so you've sealed it, okay? Mm -hmm. Then I use joint compound for the mortar. I've tried many different mortar formulations. The advantage of joint compound is water-based, it can wash off. So you repeatedly, you apply it, you repeatedly wipe it off with water until you have the right depth of the mortar lines right. that you want. And the appearance you want too. And the appearance you want, right. Then I go over with pan pastels, you know, your burnt sienna, raw sienna, whatever. Right. Just you know, a right. dusting kind yeah, of thing. Yeah, a dusting place. kind of thing to give it that whole, you know, well, oh, I, by the way, after I'm happy with the mortar, I spray paint that with a clear flat. Okay. You get the idea. Okay. Then put on the pan pastels, spray that with a clear flat, and I'm done. So you start with um, a base of the whole panel, you paint a base of that chalky white. Correct, everything. You don't base. start with the brick color, you start no, with I the white. No, I start with that, because what you're trying to do is seal the wood because otherwise you'll get all sorts of splotches and variations that you don't want. Okay. That's one of those you find out the hard way. Kind now, of if thing. it's plastic, like Plastruct or something, I guess you could still use the, the chalk white for the initial I color. I would start off to give a constant base 
you know, no matter what you did. Okay. And then you could use the exact same procedures for the rest of it. Right. You know, there's nothing, for this purpose, there's nothing magic, for, from the point of view of finishing, right. there's nothing magic about the wood compared to the plastic. Right. You know? um, it's a matter of, you know, there's just choices. The, what I like about the wood was um, there are a lot of variation in the brick. Mm -hmm. You don't necessarily get with the plastic. Right. You know, that's kind of made by a machine. These are made right. by a laser cutter and they're varied and that kind of stuff. So you get all sorts of variation in the individual bricks. Do you recall the name of the craft paints? Which ones? I know that the reds you use, are they like Americana or? Well, as long as you ask, <laughs> yes. I don't have to recall anything. I can. I'll let you folks watch the episode of A Day in a Shop with John Sethian and his shop is very interesting and because it's acrylic paints you don't have to use a paint booth well you're going to use the paint booth when you spray I'm sorry. the uh, I'm sorry. chalk it's someplace else that's you, okay you, while you're doing that i see the chalked white that we were talking about i'll oh, show you folks okay. yeah i think so i was in uh home depot the other day and that's not it but it was a rust-oleum and it was a chalked white um, or like a chalked cream color. You can look at it. It's readily available. And that's what John was talking about as a base coat on the brick. Well, let's see. Heritage Brick, Deep Burgundy, and Burnt Sierra is yeah. pretty much what you used on that one. Right. And then I get the, a grout sponge, which you can get for at any hardware store. Mm -hmm. And I dab the paint. I use... You know, planters nuts can right as the palette put the blobs of paint then dab the sponge on that right and then dab it on the brick on the brick panel then I paint individual bricks with burnt umber and country red right I okay. know those countries okay yeah. apply the Krylon apply the mortar um, but pretty, pretty much what you, you you did the you know the white on the base then you shot it with the flat clear right and then you apply your colors with the sponge right and apply and then flat clear that too yes i've told i'm told the flat clear kind of protects the, the yeah because the you're going to use water right if, you know with later things or you're going to wet it so you don't want that to screw up the paint right okay. the, to, to break down the paint and yeah. to bleed the paint here is the there it is. There it is. Uh, I saw it the other day. Yeah, chalky that, finished colonial ivory. Yeah, that's. I saw that. It's, okay, so it's cryonon, not rust oleum. Yeah, it's cryonon. Yeah. It's probably. It probably doesn't matter what you use. I right. mean, I could have used rust oleum chalked. Right. Any one of a number of things. What you want is a light color uh, that will seal the paint, and it takes five or six coats uh, to make sure that no more paint. You know, the wood is, if you will, doesn't need any more water. Wow. Um, and uh, the other thing about applying the uh, chalky finish, mm -hmm. it prevents the wood from warping. Okay. Because, you know, the wood absorbs water on one side, it'll twist on you. Okay. So you want to avoid that. Wow. Uh, again, you're sealing it. Well, hey, I really appreciate <laughs> this, uh, you know, brick uh, episode on the bricks. Thanks so much, sure. folks, for watching. All right. Take care.